We started out probably about 40 yards away, and we kept getting closer, kept getting closer, trying to see this deer, trying to trying to see through all that brush and all that laurel and, and the tall weeds and everything. And all of a sudden, there he is. He stands up. This is an absolute monster deer. Okay, he's standing up. I better get on him. He's not going to give us a whole lot of time. Winchester's World of Whitetail is brought to you by the Dallas Safari Club, promoting conservation, education, and ethical hunting worldwide. Nikon, the trusted name in optics. Winchester Ammunition, the American legend. Thompson Center, America's master gun maker. Cabela's, the world's foremost outfitter. The Buck Bomb, blows away traditional scents. Bad boy buggies, they'll never hear you coming. And by Remote Locations, Secrets of Making Outdoor TV, a 150-page full-color book from Orion Multimedia. Order by phone 1-800-850-9453. Pennsylvania is known for a lot of deer. Knew that the leaves were changing, knew that the temperatures were cooling, knew that the bucks would soon be running in that part of the world. first couple of days of hunting were absolutely beautiful days, cold in the morning, frosty, hardly any wind at all, so quiet that if you even so much as moved your foot once you sat down, it was crunch, crackle, pop because of all the leaves that on the ground. Larry Wiseau's come to Pennsylvania to cipher trophy whitetail at the ebb tide of deer activity in the last weeks of October. This time of year, the bucks go to ground, perhaps gathering strength for the approaching rut. The colors are just starting to turn, and the leaves are still on the trees, increasing the degree of hunting difficulty. It's a jungle out there, but Wazoon knows that the time of year is less important than the determination of the hunter. So Wazoon's willing to press on, whatever the difficulties, confident that Mr. Big's waiting for Mr. Whitetail. Cypher Trophy Whitetail lies in the heart of the native range of the Northern Whitetail, the largest subspecies of the deer. The lodge is located in southwestern Pennsylvania. This is one of the most beautiful areas in the country. The, the mountains are covered with a lot of different hardwoods. The leaves are just a multitude of colors, reds, greens, browns, bright yellows, oranges, and uh, truly beautiful state. The habitat itself was unbelievably beautiful. I mean, big old deep ridges, rocky ridges, little creek bottoms. I mean, every kind of imaginable habitat that you'd want to try to find a really good white-tailed deer in. Being in the booking business like I have been for over 32 years, I've booked so many different clients. But you know, one of the true animals that more people call for to hunt is the trophy whitetail. And there's nothing better to recommend a place like Cypher Trophy Whitetails for a hunter that really wants to try to get a big buck. Right before I went to Pennsylvania, I had a call from Jason Gilbertson with Winchester Ammo, and he says, Larry, he said, we're gonna send you some new ammo that we'd like for you to try in a 20-gauge slug. It arrived just a few days before I left. I took it to the range, a couple of shots, and then I was shooting nearly one-inch groups at 100 yards. But it's not until you really field test that bullet or that slug into a real animal that you learn what, what it's all about. 
from years of experience as my background as a wildlife biologist and a research biologist, been able to take a lot of different animals and I always looked at what that wound channel did, how it affected the tissues, how it affected the animal because all of us want one thing is we want to take that animal down as quickly and humanely as earthly possible. So this gave me the opportunity to field test some of that new ammo that Winchester had come up with. The deer drive is a long and honorable tradition among Pennsylvania hunters. Generally, it's meant a line of drivers pushing the deer toward standers. But that's not the only way to do it. Sometimes a solitary walker, gently disturbing the surroundings, can do a good job of nudging Whitetail to where a hunter waits on stand. And that's the plan guide Kenny Eichelberger's setting up. All these bucks have been leaving, leaving this food plot here and yes, going up here on the hill. If I can get Larry up here in the head of this little hall and get dug in, maybe we can get you to nudge one out our direction. Okay, well I can go up in here and I can make a circle and I'll push out Torgens, you know, up there on the hill at a good spot, okay. good location. Okay, well I know right where I want to go up there and I know right where we'll be. We'll, I think we can catch one of them coming out along there. Okay. Well I guess I better go get my gun then so I throw rocks at them. I'll go get my gear and I'll be right with you guys. Now Ken suggested rather than doing a full-fledged drive that he get in touch with, with Nathan and just have Nathan just kind of move around real slowly back and forth in some of these really thick areas where we anticipated or maybe thought that those bucks might be bedded up in. The nudging technique does indeed work to move deer past wise hoon stand, but among all the does and small bucks, the trophy white tail that wise hoon's hoping for is not one of them. Well, hello ladies. Hey, are my antlers straight? When did I become your wingman? You couldn't be a wingman in a bucket of chicken. Is my breath okay? Larry, I tell you, it's been it's been pretty slow here the last uh, couple of days. Sometimes you can hunt hard no matter what happens. You know, it, it doesn't work out like you quite how you want to, but it's hunting, and that to me is what all the, the I mean the mystery is there, yeah. but you know that they're good bucks here, and it's just a matter of time for one's going to mess up a little bit. He's going to show himself long enough, or he'll make a mistake that we can pick up on, and if we do, we'll do our best to take him. The woods haven't given up that big buck yet, but Wyzoon and Eichelberger know that there is still time. This action's gonna be bang, bang, bang over here. We're gonna have to be really be ready. I will be. Okay. Will be. The key to healthy herds is supporting deer not through the best of times, but the worst. Wisehoon draws on his years of experience to explain carrying capacity on Larry's world of management. One of the terms you hear so very much about in deer management is carrying capacity. Now, to some, carrying capacity may mean the total number of animals that a habitat can carry throughout the year without having any detrimental effect upon the habitat. From a purely management perspective, I look at it as carrying capacity being the number of animals that that habitat can support at the very worst of times. You know, there's some areas where during the springtime you've got a lot of food available. You look at it during the wintertime, there's very little food. Carrying capacity is a dynamic thing, so what may be a carrying capacity during the springtime in an area, when you get to the fall, may be totally two different numbers to look at. 
So if you're going to try to grow quality type deer, one of the things you want to look at when you're talking about that carrying capacity is to try to hold the number of animals on that piece of property or in that area that that habitat can support at the very worst of times, be that late summer, be it late winter, what food is available. That's what's so very important when it comes down to carrying capacity. For more management tips, go to VersusCountry.com. Hunting in October with Cypher Trophy Whitetail in Pennsylvania, Wyzoon is putting in the hours on stand while one of the guides moves slowly through the woods, nudging the deer out of their beds. This keeps things stirred up, but so far only does and small bucks have made it past Wyzoon, the big deer holding tight. But Larry's not about to lose heart on Winchester World of Whitetail. Larry, I tell you, it's been <clears throat> it's been pretty slow here the last uh, couple of days. Seen does, we've been seeing some yearling bucks, and uh, I kind of think we're in the middle of that uh, infamous October wall. <laughs> Down in our part of the country, we call it the October slump. But you know, it always seems to occur about two weeks before the rut really kicks off, and those old bucks sometimes will just flat disappear. I don't know where they go, what they do, but. You know, the only thing you can do is just keep on hunting, kind of like what we're going to do, I hope. Well, we're going to keep chasing these old boys. and uh, It'll happen. I will tell you, before before we're done, we're, we're going to get us a good buck. Something coming over right now. Yeah, Looks like it might be a doe. Yeah, That's a doe. Well, she's pretty, isn't she? She is pretty. Ken, there's something coming in behind her. Can you tell what it is? Oh, well, yeah, Larry. That, that looks like we've got a good buck coming in there now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can see him. Yeah. I can see him now. Yeah. Got long brow tides. That's one yeah, thing I can see. Oh, man, aren't they long? Yeah. He's got split G2s. See that? By golly, he does. Got something hanging off his horn, or is that a drop tie? No, Larry, that, that's a drop tie. That's, that is a drop tie. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good looking buck, Larry. Real good looking buck. Better get a look, look, better look at his face and head, though, because the last thing we want to do is shoot a younger buck. He's going to come on in here, Larry. Yeah. He's, he's going to come on in around us here. And, uh, yeah, Larry, that, that's a good looking buck. But, uh, that's the kind of bucks we're trying to let go here at Cypher Trophy Whitetail. Uh, Good. You know, we're, we're looking for something four and a half years or better. He sure is pretty, but you're, he is going to be an absolute great deer in a year or so. Yeah, but he's dandy. And big long brows. Yeah. Beautiful buck. Beautiful buck. The sight of that buck is an encouraging sign for both Wyzoon and Eichelberger. It confirms that there are still some big deer in these Pennsylvania hills, and it inspires the hunter and guide to work just that much harder. The buck of October, and maybe a lifetime, is about to make its appearance. Winchester's World of Whitetail is brought to you by the Dallas Safari Club. Promoting conservation, education, and ethical hunting worldwide. Nikon, the trusted name in optics. Winchester Ammunition, the American legend. Thompson Center, America's master gunmaker. Cabela's, the world's foremost outfitter. The Buck Bomb, blows away traditional scents. Bad Boy Buggies, they'll never hear you coming. And by Wild Game Innovations, nutrition, attraction, and action. The October slump, when the big bucks seem to vanish like smoke, has settled over the Pennsylvania woods. But Mr. Whitetail Larry Wisehoon's hoping the technique they call nudging will work to drive a deer to him as he hunts with guide Kenny Eichelberger of Cypher Trophy Whitetail. I don't know where the bucks went on that particular little push, but not a single buck came by us. So we decided that maybe we better 
better, better come up with a little bit different plan, maybe go to another area. So we dropped back down the hill, walked our way probably about a half a mile or so and set up on this other little ridge where we could watch this absolutely little open bottom, see some stuff back up behind us. I'm waiting because I know any moment a big old buck is gonna bust out. We got a couple of does coming in right here below us, right down there. Yeah. Well, there's one coming right at us, Larry. Boy, she is right here in our lap. Wish that buck would do that. Boy, he'd be in trouble. Oh yeah, if that buck would come in like that, Larry, oh, we'd be man. in business. There's a good buck coming right at us, Larry. Coming right at us. I can't see him. Breaking down the hill. God, I can't get on him. I can't get on him. Hey. Oh, boy. That's a big buck. That's a, that's a big buck, Larry. He was that's just a big in buck. between. Each time I was yeah. almost on him, there was a tree in the way. There was no way to get a shot at him. Yeah. I should still see yeah. something. There must be something else down there. Oh man, he's got all kinds of horn on his Oh man, he, he, that, that, that's, a, that's a buck. That's what we've been looking for now for this whole week here. What do you think? I, I lost him right over here in this bottom. And there's a lot of real thick cover. I, I'm hoping what he's gonna do is just bed down right over there. You and I'll, you and I'll just make a little trip up around the edge of this bench. We start walking and we start walking and, and... Ken kind of goes, you know, there is a spot over here that he said, let's just let's just set up in glass and we'll try to see what we can come up with. And as we get up on this little rise, Ken goes, antlers, antlers, right there, right there, right there, right, there, right, right below us, right below us. You know, my God, you know, we don't know where the deer's laying down. He's in a big old steep little hollow like that. And he, I think he's just right over, right over the hill there. there. Okay, I'll yeah. be ready. Okay. okay. Ken just spotted the deer. All he could see was the very tips of his antlers. He's back around over here. We're gonna try to get a little bit closer. Maybe get on the line so we can see down into it. Cause he's down in some deep, steep stuff. We kept getting closer, kept getting closer, trying to see this deer, trying to trying to see through all that brush and all that laurel and, and the tall weeds and everything. Standing up. Better get on him. He's not going to give us a whole lot of time. I'm on him. I'm on him. I'm on him. He's down. He's down. He's down. Let me reload. Oh man. That is a big buck. That's a great buck. That's oh. a great buck, Larry. Great buck. I, I knew he was a big deer. I had no idea how big he was. So I couldn't wait to get there, and I think Ken felt the same way. Ken had looked at the antlers a little bit more than I did, and I, he kind of looked at me and kind of winked and grinned, and like, I think we got a good one down. Look at that buck. I mean, what a, what a buck. What a buck, Larry. I'm not gonna need that one anymore. Oh, man, I'll tell you what. That's a... That new Winchester did a deal on that buck. Yes, it did. Look at that. Oh, buddy, way to go. <laughs> oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Hey, look at this, Larry. He's just been rubbing. Look at the fresh tree bark. Oh, head. yeah, just right there. God, that big old dark gray muzzle. But would you look at that deer? Look at the mass on that Got a bottom. big old kicker back here. Points yeah. coming off of points. Little Another little drop tine right there, drop tine there. Another, another point there. Little burr point there carries that mass all the way up. That's a buck. That is yes, the kind sir, of buck that you dream about, or at least I dream about, <laughs> let me tell you. A hard week of hunting in the slow time of the season. A running glimpse of deer and antler. A heart in the throat stalk across a crackling bed of fallen leaves. 
Then time for only one quick, deadly shot. And Mr. Whitetail's taken the buck of a lifetime, maybe his best deer ever, scoring more than 193 points, all in the beautiful hills of Pennsylvania on Winchester World of Whitetail. It, it's amazing. You know, it's one of those situations to where you can't ever give up. We hunted hard. We tried everything we could. We had drives that were unsuccessful in seeing deer. We tried spotting and stalking. It didn't work. We tried doing some rattling. Could not get any results. I tried grunting. Seemed like nothing that was working for us until finally we started putting on this little push after the weather changed. And guess what? It worked out. <laughs> oh, man. What a great hunt, though. Yes, it's been a great year.